everyone, I'm Sir Oswald and welcome to my video class. On my previous video, I discussed about the different online system, functions, and platforms wherein you can utilize for your future projects and outputs. For today's video, I will be discussing about the online safety, security, ethics, and etiquette using computer. These are the following topics for today's video. First, we have the types of malware, online threats, Windows security, and 10 commandments of computer ethics. So first, let us define what is malware. Malware is an any piece of software that is designed with the intent to damage or disrupt or gain unauthorized access to your device and inflict harm to data and or people in multiple ways. These are the types of malware. We have worms, computer virus, trojan, adware, spyware, boots or bonnets, ransom, spam mail, email spoofing, phishing, and farming. Worms. Worms are spread by a software vulnerability or phishing attacks. Once a worm was installed itself into your computer's memory, it starts to infect the whole machine and in some cases, your whole network. Depending on the type of worm and your security measures, they can do serious damage. These parasitic nasties can modify and delete files, can inject and malicious software onto computers, can replicate themselves over and over to different system resources, can steal your data, can install a convenient backdoor for hackers. They can infect large numbers of computers packs, consuming the bandwidth and overloading your web server as they go. So sila yung mga uri ng mga malware na kung saan talaga they can do a serious damage to your devices or to your memory. Uh, so ang ginagawa nila, uh, talagang na they replicate themselves para mas mag-slow down yung computer mo. Pag nag-slow down na yung device mo or your computer, ibig sabihin na meron na or infected na yung device mo ng malware o yung worm specifically. Yan. So, pwede rin siya matransfer or ma-infect yung one device to another by sharing files or kung meron kang flash drive na i-inject yung sa mismo device mo na galing sa infected device so, you na nag-transfer ka din ng files papunta sa memory mo then, doon na na nagkakaroon ng transferring ng ng worm sa isang device to another device. And meron din cases na pwede rin ma-infect yung mga device. Mas mabilis sila kapag naka-network yung kagaya sa mga computer shop. Na isa lang doon maging infected and lahat iyon ay pwede na maging infected ng worm. Computer virus. Unlike worms, viruses need an already infected active operating system or a program to work. Viruses are typically attached to an executed file or a Word document, usually spread by infected websites, file sharing, or email attachment downloads. A virus will lie dormant until the infected host, file, or program is activated. Once that happens, the virus is able to replicate itself and spread through your systems. So, yung ginagawa ni uh, computer virus once was activated, uh, talagang tinitira niya yung miso hardware ng yung devices. So, kapag ang device mo nag-malfunction siya or na-experience ka ng pag-hang or nagkakaroon ka ng system blackout or not responding, so there's a possibility that uh, you downloaded or your device are already infected by virus that either uh, you... Um, your, your device has been effect, infected by simply downloading a free free applications na meron din kasama o meron din free virus din na kasama. So, yun din kasi yung mismo threats din kapag tayo ay lagi nagda-download ng mga safe na mga applications, na, lalo na kung ito ay free. Yan. So, huwag tayo masyadong mag-install ng mga mga free apps na hindi naman din siya 
ganun ka secure. Next, we have Trojan. Just as it sounds, a Trojan horse is a malicious program that disguises itself as a legitimate file. Because it looks trustworthy, users download it. Trojan themselves are a doorway. Unlike Worm, they need a host to work. Once you've got the Trojan on your device, hackers can use it to delete, modify, and capture your data, can harvest your device as part of a bootnet, can spy on your device, can gain access to your network. So, si Trojan, nagsisipi lang siya para ng container. Container siya ng mga dormant, uh, dormant malware. Kung saan, they're just waiting for it to be activated. Then, dun sila magiging activate yung mga, dun magiging, uh, pwede maging harm, harmful yung mga uh, nasa loob niyang mga malware na iba-iba. So, hackers use this as, for example, a free uh, free access for for a certain file or applications na ikaw naman ay ginrab mo yung opportunity. But, kasama mo na rin na dinalo yung mga Trojan, Trojan malware na meron siyang mga kasamang malware pa sa loob niya. So, kagaya siya ng mga nung Trojan horse sa, sa Troy na mayroong mga tao, mga soldier dun sa loob ng horse na nagsilbing gift or regalo pero at the end, talagang umatake siya dun sa mismo Troy. So, ganyan din siya. Dun nakuha yung kanyang, um, kanyang pangalan at kanyang functions din or yung kanyang ginagawa sa isang device. Next, we have adware. Adware is one of the better known types of malware. This serves pop-ups and display ads that often have no relevance to you. Some users will put up with certain types of adware in return for free software game for example, but not all adware is equal. At best, it is annoying and slow down your machine. At worst, the ads link to site where malicious downloads await unsuspecting users. Adware can also deliver spyware, is often easily hacked, making devices that have it it's installed a software target for hackers, fishers, and scammers. So, see Adware, you can say that your devices are already infected by Adware. If they have a lot of pop-up ads, na unstoppable na siya, that that may cause you for for uh, not working. Kasi, um, umaga, pag yung tod, pag yung adware talaga is matake sa device mo, uh, continuously siya nagpa-pop up. Then, hindi ka na makakagawa ng yung ginagawa kasi continuously and every functions na tinatype mo sa sa device mo, sa laptop mo, sa computer, continuously din siyang nag, nagpa-pop up. Usually, kapag ito ay nakakunik kayo sa internet. Then, yung mas pinaka-worst talaga, yung talaga na auto-link ka dun sa mismong website na kung saan talaga na infected na yon ng mga free, na mga free na malware dun sa computer mo. So, worst comes to worst, na, 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 na ililid ka pa ni Adware dun sa uh, sa mga sites na infected ng mga malware sa mga malicious content. Next, we have spyware. Spyware certainly records your online activity, harvesting your data and collecting personal information such as usernames, password, and survey habits. Spyware is common threat, usually distributed freeware or shareware, that has an appealing function on the front end with a covert mission running in the background that you might never notice. It is often used to carry out identity theft and credit card credit card fraud. So, si spyware, uh, usually hindi siya na talaga na detect ng computer. Kasi pwede siyang dumaan din sa emails, sa spam mo, na if you receive an, an email from an anonymous, na usually nagsasabi sa ng, ng you want, you want a specific, uh, specific prices, Yan. So, pag in-open mo siya, the moment na in-open mo siya, na na-activate din dun yung mga spyware that some theft or hackers can now have fully or can now monitor your 
your device to get your your username password and to match worse your account your bank account that they, that they can do uh, money transfer from the from your account to another account without your notice then yung iba they they intend to use your credit card for online shopping Yan. so magugulat ka lang na binibil ka ng bank mo for certain purchases na hindi mo naman siya nagamit because of simply your device or get, uh, your device is infected by a spyware kaya nila nakuha yung vital information next we have bots and bonnets a bot is a computer that is being infected with malware so it can be controlled remotely by a hacker the bot also known as the zombie computer can be used to launch more attacks or to become part of collection of bots or also known as the bonnet now if your device is infected by a bot the hacker may able to do such as key logging screenshots and webcam access spreading others type of malware sending spam and phishing messages so could you imagine if your device has been infected by this that you, you, you are not aware of doing such activities in your devices na nakakatakot siya kasi if a certain person do such crime on your device at makita nila yung IP address ng iyong computer na nandoon sa'yo na ikaw yung magmamayari nun na hindi mo alam na yun ay nagagawa, sa, nagagawa nila sa device mo. So, you can be uh, be the prime suspect. Pero syempre, meron naman din tayong due process then if you can prove na yung device mo is infected by this kind of malware then yun nga, siguro ma, ma observe ka. Pero, as much as possible din na hindi ka dapat ma-installan ng ganito. Kasi syempre, uh, yung privacy mo rin kasi at stake na rin dito. So yung mga napapanood nyo sa movies, so definitely ito yung mga malware na ginagamit nila para makapang, makapang-hack ng isang device and more or system. Next, we have ransomware. Ransomware denies or restrict access to your own files. Then it demands payment, usually with a uh, cryptocurrency, in returns for letting you back in. To reduce the risk of ransom attacks, you must always keep your operating system up to date, keep your antivirus software up to date, back up your most important files, and don't open attachments from unknown sources. So, yung ransomware, para to, yung kanyang, uh, yung idea kung paano nag-function ito, parang yung kidnap for ransom, di ba? Kung saan, kapag na-kidnap yung isang family member nyo, kailangan yung mag- bigay ng pera. So, parang ganyan din siya. So, may mga certain site din na, or mga hackers na ganito sila, yung modus nila para magkaroon sila ng ng income or kita. Para man, kung sakaling importante yung files mo yun at meron siyang infected ng, ng ransomware, they will provide yun how, how you gonna pay them back or paano yung mag- bibili, either bibili ka ng system nila para ma- makuha mo o matanggal yung restriction doon sa file mo. Yeah, so, to avoid that, so, huwag tayo mag, masyadong mag-entertain or mag-open ng mga untrusted file na pwede mong makuha throughout throughout the, throughout the month or throughout the year. Next, we have spam mail. Usually, unsolicited commercial email sent from an unknown source with identical message sent to multiple recipients. Most it is not a dangerous, but it can be time and space consuming. Dangerous ones can carry virus and other malwares. So, si spam mail, uh, kung hindi mo man din siya i-open, your device will not be, uh, your device will not be infected. Pero kung makikita mo doon sa mismong part ng email mo, for example, sa, sa Gmail or sa Yahoo Mail mo, uh, meron doon mga warnings kasi na-detect naman din nila yan. So, yun lang ulit. Pakaisipin lang din natin kung wala naman tayong 
sinalihan ng isang isang competitions or raffle draw na sa mga na, mga nakaraang buwan then bilang may mapapadala sa na nanalo ka so pwede mo na rin siyang masyunin na huwag siyang buksan okay, so hindi lahat na nagsasend sa'yo ng mga sa mail mo ay dapat mong buksan so so must always think before you click para ma-avoid natin yung yung device natin na ma-infect Next, we have email spoofing. So, it is a deceitful email practice in which the sender address is changed so that it would appear to have a com- come from different source which is usually some someone you know. Email spoofing is usually used by spammers to hide the origin of the spam. So, kagaya rin ito ng, ng spam. So, ito ay na-access or na- nangyayari ito sa yung email sa pag may nag-e-email sa'yo. So, ito yung usually yung mga ginagawa ng mga spammers ng mga owners. Sinisa nila sa mga owners ng credit card na, for example, uh, yung madalas ito yung nangyayari yung sa pag may credit card ka, for example, sa video na nag update yung system nila, kinakailangan nila makuha yung username mo, then yung password, date of birth, then yung card number mo. So, yun yung mga kinakailangan na mga vital information kasi para ma-access sila yun. So, pag ikaw, unaware ka sa ganito at nagsumagot ka doon at ilagay mo mga vital informations mo, then, magugulat ka na lang na meron ng mga purchase o na-hack na nila yung iyong bank account o yung iyong credit card by simply answering or uh, you're, you're taking their bait dito sa email spoofing nila. Next, Next, we have phishing and farming. Phishing is a deceitful practice of trying to get confidential information such as passwords and usernames and credit card details by making it appear as it comes from a trustworthy source. Farming is a dangerous hacker attacks on a website which is directs all traffic to that website to another fake website that will allow you to log in your username and password. So, pareho sila talagang agenda is to get the, the, your vital information. So, phishing, you may get this through 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 email or pwede sa isang site na mahahack nila doon yung username mo. Then, for farming naman, ito yung mas nakatakot kasi akala mo, for example, um, siya yung na-link ka, for example, sa, sa banking, sa bank online mo, for example, for video, for example. Akala mo video interface siya pero fake pala yun. Na once in enter mo doon yung username and password mo, mareretrieve nila yun. They got a copy of that. Then pwede nilang gawin yung transaction mo online. So yun lang yung mas uh, threat dito lalo na sa mga bank details mo. So again, so a piece of advice sa mga threats how how you can get away from this threats. Siyempre, kailangan mong maging video, uh, vigilant sa mga website or sa mga natatanggap mo on, uh, through online. Then secondly, dapat kailangan mo din siyempre maging, uh, i- maging aware din sa credibility ng isang site or ng mismong taong nagpadala sa iyo. And then, always, syempre, hanggang, hanggat maaari, kinakailangan mo lang din gumamit ng mga secure applications na may bayan. Kasi kanamitan kasi ng mga malware ay nai-embed sila sa mga free. Mga free subscription, free yung mga APK file format na talagang yung mga binibridge nyo yung kanyang license. So, syempre, kapag yun ang ginawa mo, may kasama din, hindi natin masusure, hindi natin masigurado na wala siyang kasamang mga malware din. Ayan, so para mas secure and safe din tayo, kung may bayad, di, di pambayad naman, hindi eh doon tayo sa may legit kesa doon sa mga fake kasi doon mismo nagiging, na, nagkakaroon ng harm yung ating device. And now for our next topic, we'll be discussing about the Windows security and the subtopics are changing and adding user account, creating new password, setting up and changing the screensaver security settings. 
changing and adding user account. Possible users of your account are your your parents, siblings, children, friends, lovers, and others. So the, the disadvantage of having a single account is that everyone who uses your computer will have the same application settings, file, and system permission. So if you have uh, if you have other person na nagsishare ng device, na nakashare mo sa device, so mas maganda siguro na magkaroon kayo ng separate account doon sa inyong, sa inyong dev- sa isang device. Kasi, for example, ikaw naman yung may-ari nyo, syempre, dapat ikaw yung mas more more uh, control about the features and security. Ngayon, kung papahiramin mo na naman siya, for example, yung kapatid mo, mas nakakabata sa'yo, so pwede mo siyang bigyan ng access, pero with limited. Yan, kasi para hindi rin makuha, or parang meron ka pa rin privacy din sa mga files mo, na hindi nila ma-access. Okay? Now, these are the kinds of accounts. So first, computer admin. Computer admin controls all the content and users of the computer. Install, program, and adds and delete users. Second, we have limited account. Has, li- has limited control and only have access to his or her particular account. Then we have guest. Guest is account created for transient users and do not have access account and their content. Changing password. Securing a strong password combination makes your account and device free from threats. In Windows 8 to Windows 10, aside from logging your the usual password, you have an option I changing password. Securing a strong password combination makes your account and device free from threats. In Windows 8 to Windows 10, aside from logging your the usual password, you have an option either PIN or picture password. In some computers, they added fingerprint scanner in accessing their computer. So, mas mahalaga talaga na meron kang um, strong password na ikaw lang nakakaalam or mas madali mo siyang naalala. Then, as time goes on, then dapat i-secure mo din na siya na kahit every once a month or every month nagbabago ka ng password or every 3 months, 6 months or a year nagbabago ka ng password kasi hindi natin din may iwasan din na may mga taong familiar sa'yo na alam na yun yung password mo. So, to avoid from your files to be to be shared or to to view so dapat uh, kinakailangan mo galingin din na mag kahit pa paano pa, mag-iba-iba ng password creating password this is one of the first line of defense for information security it must be case sensitive so dapat yung password mo kung word siya so dapat may naka capitalize doon lahat or kung gusto mo naka lower case yung umpisa or naka upper case yan then second at least eight character eight characters using letters symbols and or numbers yan na basta lalagyan mo siya ng either at sign underscore asterisk with numbers combination para mas malakas yung password or strong yung password mo na hindi ito madaling mahula ng ibang tao. Then, hard guess. So, syempre, dapat yung password mo, hindi ito may isip na ito yung password mo. Kung baga kahit yung pinakamalapit na tao sa'yo, dapat hindi mo siya sinishare yung password mo sa kanya. Lalo na kung merong uh, important file na nandoon. Then, something you could always remember. So, dapat yung password mo, eh, dapat ito eh, either may relate sa'yo o yung ginagamit mo siya ng madalas para hindi ma mo siya malimutan. Pwede ka naman mag-iba ng password every month, for example. Halimbawa, iibahin mo lang yung number. Mag-start ka ng either 01, 02, 03. So, hanggang tumatagal, number lang yung napapalitan. But still, strong pa rin yung password mo. Next, security center. This is the place where you can set additional protection from threats to your computer, especially when using the internet. So we have firewall, and auto-updates, and virus protection. 
For firewall, it is helped to protecting the computer from unauthorized entries, viruses, or worms from the internet or network or installers and downloads. It is recommended that you keep this setting on. So, wag po natin talagang i-disable yung ating firewall kasi uh, ito yung defense mechanism ng ating device lalo na kapag tayo ay nag-browse internet. Um, there are certain installations or once we download an unsecure file or download na dinownload natin na minsan nadetect yung firewall natin na natetrat siya as malware or virus. So, yung iba natin yung turn off siya pero hindi kasi natin din Ma masasabi na secure yung file. Pwede nga na-install mo yung yung isang application, isang software, pero meron na rin pala siyang ginagawa o na-download mo na din, na-activate mo na din yung mga malware doon sa device mo. So, kumbaga, mas double risk yung nangyari na nag-avail ka ng unsecured file kasi install mo pa siya. Okay? So, dapat lagi natin natin siyang i-turn on yung ating uh, firewall. Next, automatic updates. Many of the updates coming from Microsoft are usually meant update some Windows features. Secure areas of vulnerability, fix any bugs in the OS, and others. So, yung kapag lalo na kapag legit yung inyong operating system, dapat kinakailangan na ka-enable lagi yung auto-update. Para kasi minsan si, si Microsoft, syempre, na-update din niya yung kanyang yung office para din sa defense din sa mga updated malware and virus na pwede may encounter ng device mo kapag nag-online ka. So, dagdag protection din ito para ma-fix din yung paglalog or yung mga bugs or yung pag-ahang pag, ng yung device kapag nag update lagi ng operating system. Virus protection. It is meant to locate, find, removes virus threats that are already in your computer. It prevents malware from gaining entry into your computer. It must be constantly updated to ensure that it is, can be prevented the newly created malware. So, virus protection, for example, sa, sa Microsoft Office, uh, Microsoft Office or yung mismong Microsoft, yung mismong operating system mo, meron itong kasamang Windows Defender na kung saan enough na yun, para ma-detect or ma magawa niya yung ma-detect, ma ma-hinder niya yung pag-penetrate ng mga malware do sa device mo. Lalo na kung ito'y updated. Pero yung pag install din kasi minsan ng mga free antivirus dyan na nakukuha niyo online, sometimes it works. Meron silang mga na pero at the end of the month, kailangan mo nang mag-purchase sa kanila ng full subscription o parang license nun. Pero ang... ang Downfall naman kasi nun ay may mga ibang antivirus din na may mga kasama na rin siyang Trojan o mga dormant viruses o malware sa loob na kung saan pag hindi ka nagbayad, hindi ka nag-avail ng kanilang, kanilang license, license na para mag-continue, minsan dun siya nagiging activate na syempre, ikaw, pang marketing strategy nila yun na kapag kapag nag-malfunction ng computer mo or sila, nagkaroon na ng virus or infected, sila yung magkakaroon ng kung gusto mo ng antidote para doon, bibilin mo yun, yung license nila. So, parang marketing strategy din nila, din nila yun yung mga nagpapa libre for a month ng antivirus. Kasi, may mga certain cases din kasi talaga na kailangan mo nang maobliga ka ng bumili ng kanilang license product para matanggal yung mismong malware. So, mission marketing strategy na din nila yun. And now for our next topic, the 10 commandments of computer ethics. It was written by Dr. Ramon C. Barkin in 1992 from the Computer Ethics Institute. It means to create a set of standards to guide and instruct people on the ethical use of computers. Rule number one. Thou shalt not use computer to harm other people. Thou shalt not interfere with other people's computer work. Thou shalt not snoop around in other people's file. Thou shalt not use a computer to steal. Thou shalt not use computer to bear false witness. 
Thou shalt not use or copy software which you have not paid. Thou shalt not use other people's computer resources without authorization. Thou shalt not appropriate other people's intellectual output. Thou shalt think about social consequences of the programs you write. Thou shalt use of computer in many ways that show consideration to others. So those are the ethical standards that will be your guide in using computers. Na napaka self-explanatory pero minsan talagang nakaka nakakalimutan natin din gawin. So parang uh, gawin lang natin din yun, then we'll be guided. And syempre, uh, lalim din lang natin tatandaan din na meron tayong uh, batas for for cyber for cyber crime. So, hindi po excuse na hindi natin alam ang batas o ano yung content ng cybercrime, anong saklaw noon. Pero at least if we follow those simple guidelines or steps or uh, ethical standards, ay mapiprevent natin na tayo ay mag-commit ng isang krimen, lalo na sa, sa digital or di- digital citizenship. Now, I do hope na marami kayong natutunan sa ating naging sa discussion ngayon. Then, for our next video, uh, my topic would be the contextualized online search and research skills. Goodbye class and see you again!